What's it like as a musician on a cruise ship? Welcome to Coffee with Sean. I'm Sean. Today I'm going to do something a little differently. Um, I was a videographer on cruise ships, but uh, not many of you know, I actually wanted to be a musician on a cruise ship. But when I started looking into it, I realized I didn't know how to read music. And that's a big part of some of the cruise ship jobs as a musician. And I also didn't know any other musicians at the time. So I was kind of stuck. Um, but fortunately, I ended up being a broadcast tech, something I really, really enjoyed. Um, but today I have a good friend of mine, Jordan, uh, who actually was a musician and I guess kind of still is back and forth because um, it is contract based on cruise ships. But uh, I thought it'd be a great idea to get a musician's perspective on cruise life. But more importantly, um, I want to know what it's like being a musician on a cruise ship. So Jordan, thank you so much. I'm just going to ask you uh, some questions and try and get uh, for myself, you know, to, get to know more about what it's like being a musician. But I know that there's a lot of um, viewers out there who also would like to know if, uh, if that's cool with you. Absolutely. Happy to help. Awesome. All right, Jordan. Um, what instrument do you play? Well, uh, I play I play a lot of different instruments. I went to school for bass and, um, and I also play guitar. So uh, with regard to to the ship life aspect, I was I was playing bass on one contract and then guitar on two contracts. How long have you been uh, playing bass and guitar? Um, well, uh, guitar for like uh, going on like twenty years. Um, but that's that's because I picked it up when I was like twelve. Um, but I've been. Uh, I went to school to play bass, actually. So that was when I was about 20 years old-ish. Uh, and then I started learning how to play professionally. So I learned how to play bass professionally when I was about 20 years old. And, um, and then I stuck with that until a couple of years ago when I wanted to get into guitar more. And I didn't start playing guitar professionally until ships, actually. So, yeah. Yeah. Why do ships? Great question. Um, it 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 never really occurred to me to do ships um, initially because I didn't even know it was a thing. Back in 2013, my buddy Isaac <clears throat> he asked me if I wanted to join cruise ships, and it, it, what turned me off was the whole contract aspect of it because it's like kind of on off, and uh, you don't really get vacation pay, so you got to be really good about your money. And at the time, I was working at a law firm, and um, I figured, well, I'm already making X amount of dollars per month, so uh, what I might as well do is uh, just stick with what I've got. And then after that, um, maybe two years later, I came back from Hawaii, didn't have a job, and then, uh, yeah, I just figured, well, why not give it a shot? So at that point, I was I was playing a little bit more, and I was dabbling in playing bass and playing guitar and uh, audio production things like that. And I figured, well, I might as well give it a shot um, because I know that music makes me happy. And who knows what 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 being on ship is gonna be like? I had no idea, and uh, I was feeling pretty adventurous. So um, just to to come come around full circle here, why ships? I don't really know. Um, initially, initially, um, I could give you the, I, you know, I, I, I could give you the sell now, you know, after after two years of experience. But um, why I started is that was just like you know jumping in feet first. If I'm a musician, Jordan, how do I go about getting a a gig on a cruise ship? It's hard. It's hard enough getting a gig on land. I can't imagine like getting a gig at sea. Right. Um. <clears throat> Well, the thing is, it first of all, it depends on what you want to do, right? So there are different positions that are available. For example, you could you could be a solo guitarist, you could be in a quartet, a trio, um, depending on the ship that you go on, whether or not they offer that kind of thing. You could be in a duo, um, whatever. Uh, or you could be in, for example, the house band. Um, the house band, which they call the orchestra on Celebrity, 
Um, for that particular position, you have to be able to sight read music really, really well because the way that it works is... They do the production shows as well, right? Yes, absolutely. And then sometimes okay. they, they end up doing um, little shows around the ship as well. Like um, like jazz night and, and different kinds of stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and it's really cool to be in that group. Um, but the reason why you have to be able to read music really well is because um, you get one rehearsal and then you play that same night. So that rehearsal is is so that you can get used to the music, but also get used to the cues, get used to um, the way that the, the, the guest entertainer wants to perform, so on and so forth. Um, all of the other positions, they... Um, they don't necessarily require you to be able to play music. Uh, oh, excuse me, <laughs> read music, play music. <laughs> yeah, you can't play. Um, if if you can't read music, it's totally fine because it's like if you can still play it and look the part and act the part, like they don't care. You know, like you're still going to be entertaining regardless. So uh, in order for you to get started, um, the number one thing is to have some type of press pack. And that would be, for example, a video of you playing, um, some photos of yourself or your group, and a, a repertoire list. Now, all of these, again, depend on what position you're going for. Um, when, when I was in the jazz band, obviously, the repertoire... Um, it, the repertoire didn't have to be so big because in jazz, you can improv for like 10, 15, 20 minutes. I remember when I was on the ship in a jazz quartet... We had a 45-minute set. We played two of the tunes we played for like 35 minutes because, you know, we were just soloing for forever. So the repertoire doesn't necessarily have to be so big. But, again, if you are in a, uh, a party band, for example, you have to know like five, 600 songs because you're expected to play the hits. And for the most part, exactly as they're played. And so sometimes you're playing like three-and-a-half-minute tunes. So you may need a 20-song set. So, um, so yeah, the, the, that's pretty much how you get started. Um, there are some cruise lines where you can apply directly to them. Um, I, I may be wrong, but I think Norwegian, you can apply directly with them to be a musician. But for a lot of cruise lines, um, you either need to have an, an agent or it's extremely helpful. So, so yeah, finding an agent... Um, isn't that hard to do? There are a few that are really big, like uh, Landau Entertainment and uh, Suman Music. Um, but it, applying with them, you just have to submit, and then what they do is they have a, a particular standard that they know. You know, because of, over the course of time, they're like, we know what works, we know what doesn't, and uh, you know, they they'll even help you throughout the process. Like, here's here's what may help you. Um, land the gig better because it only serves to help them they get you the gig they get the money so yeah going through an agent is really going to help you because they're supposed to take care of everything uh, all on the front end and so all you're doing is you're focusing on your music and you pretty much board the ship you don't have to worry about um, a lot of paperwork or anything besides you know your general things that you have to take care of like uh, medical and whatever which and that's what all crew members have to do anyway. So exactly, exactly. Right. Did you prefer uh, your jazz quartet, or did you prefer when you were in your duo? Ooh, that's that's really tough because um, they were completely different. So here's what I really liked about being in a quartet. Um, it you feel a lot more um, involved in. In bouncing your energy off different people so we had a singer and then we had the the rhythm section which was guitar bass and drums and then sometimes the singer wouldn't even play and we would just jam and um, the the biggest difference between being in a quartet versus a duo is that sometimes you really feel like you're uh, this is not the right word I'm looking for, but kind of alone. But you're not alone. You're with somebody else. But it's very isolated. So your sound. So for example, I was the guitarist in, um, in the duo, and what that meant was like I was holding it down, like the only. Oh yeah, I was gonna say like you're the only instrument aside from voice. So you're basically everything else 
as as backing the you know the vocal absolutely <clears throat> so sometimes it just felt really uh empty to me because i'm used to a really big full sound um and also because i play bass like i'm used to having the low end there and you know when i play guitar to me it sounds kind of empty but because i come from a bass background um i try to fill that in as much as possible so those are, that's the main thing that that um, was the biggest difference, but the other the the other side, one reason why I like the duo better is because I feel like you have a little bit more freedom. Um, when you don't have to bounce ideas across two, sometimes even three different people, and try to communicate with them on stage, um, and it's only one other person, you can kind of go left, go right, or you know turn around or whatever, and there's only one person that has to follow you, or vice versa. You know, if if the singer, usually you follow the singer, if the singer decides to go left, okay, well, I guess I'm going left now. Versus if the whole band has to go left all of a sudden, uh, sometimes that leads you like into a ditch. <laughs> right. So, yeah, that's the thing. Um, but also when you're in a quartet, you know, there's just, there, there's, there's, you have more opportunity for camaraderie. You know, so when I was in the duo, I was I was with uh, my duo partner Lacey, and usually when you see duos on ships, they're couples, and Lacey and I are not a couple. So um, that was an interesting situation because we would always hang out, but at the same time, it's like, um, uh, you know, like the the guy girl interaction, but it's not like I'm chilling with a dude all the time, right? My buddy Isaac, who got me onto ships in the first place, he was on my first contract, so. I would be up drinking with him till like six in the morning. We'd stay all the way up till <laughs> breakfast, grab breakfast in the mess, and then go to sleep. So, you know, things like that. But, you know, I don't know too many girls who are down to do things like that, at least not for an extended period of time. So that that was the cool thing about the quartet. You know, I had my boys. Um, anyway, so th those are the those are the general things that I can think of off the top of my head on which what I liked about uh, quartets versus versus the duos. Um, I, I can't give you a definitive like this one's better than the other because they both have their strengths and weaknesses. Did you get paid the same for both of those situations? No, actually, um, it, when I was in the quartet, I was getting paid slightly less because the band leader naturally makes more. Um, however, when when I went into the duo, um, I felt like we had a really good product, a really good thing going on, and I actually negotiated a couple hundred bucks more than I was making in, in the uh, in the quartet. So it kind of just depends. Is that is that something that that people should be aware of? That if you are um, uh, an artist, but more specifically, I guess if you're if you're if you're going through an agency, you actually do have some power to negotiate um, what you can make. Is that is that yes, absolutely. Right? It's not it's not always like here's what it is, you know, because the industry is it. Th there's always a little bit of wiggle room, and I feel like this is where a lot of people get kind of scared because, in this particular type of industry, you know, with people who who don't have a lot of experience, they end up get, getting themselves into into situations where they're really excited, and they want to play and perform because this is what they've dedicated their lives to but then what ends up happening is they get a gig and they're like "Ooh, uh, that's a little bit less than i was i was expecting but i don't want to mess this up so i'll just i guess i'll just take it versus just asking because you never know what's going to happen you know if if you ask and they're like no we can't afford it like the the why i don't see any reason why an agency or or a cruise line would go oh you're asking for way too much let's just go with the other guys you know, when they've already chosen you for a reason. Right. I think you, sh you, you shouldn't be afraid to negotiate, right? You should. And because, like you said, you are bringing a product of value. And I would say, because I was also in the entertainment department, and the entertainment side of the cruise ship is a huge reason people go on these ships. So you have value as an artist, as a musician, as an entertainer, right? And... You, you should feel like you deserve to be compensated for it. In many ways, the entertainment uh, department 
um, especially the performers, are treated very differently on the ship because of what we do naturally. Exactly. You know, like people come and you know, like it can be argued for pretty much any department. You're like, no, you know, our department's the most important, and this isn't that. But and I'm not trying to get into that debate. But <laughs> the 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 thing is, it's like a lot of people they need things to do, right? And so. It, you know, uh, not just talking about the performers, but we talk about, you know, entertainment like uh, activities. You know, you got youth yes. staff and stuff like that. You know, people on the ship need things to do, you know, just because there's food and just because there's gambling, you know, but they need the entertainment. They want they want the the energy, the action. So, yeah, it's it's um, they, they treat us a little bit differently. The entertainment department in in many ways, not right. not all around. What um what equipment did you bring? And like, if I'm a guitar player, should I bring all five of my guitars? And like, and and where where on a cruise ship do you even store this kind of stuff? Let's start with what you should bring in general. Um, now I I'm gonna answer this um with respect to what what I brought only because it's like. There are there are a whole bunch of different types of acts on the ship, and sometimes a lot of people bring a lot of electronics and stuff like that. But for the traditional type of duo or person joining a group, um, what I'm going to say is you don't uh, try to bring as little as possible, right? I mean, if you're in a party band and you need the pedals, okay, sure. But I mean, the thing is, you don't want to be lugging around a 25 pound pedal case plus your guitar plus all your cables in like a backpack or something like that every single night to each set because you may not have um, a dedicated venue. A lot of times you'll be playing in the Grand Foyer and then you'll be playing in a lounge and then later on you may be poolside. And so each time you got to set your stuff up and take it back down and your sets are about 45 minutes to an hour. So it's not even like you're like it's like it would be worth it to bring your whole rig. You don't need to bring your amp or anything like that. Uh, generally speaking, what I would recommend is obviously bring your guitar, bring two cables just in case one fails. Um, if well, I should say bring an extra cable because you might need several cables. So bring an extra cable because one might fail. Um, bring multiple packs of strings. And, uh, and yeah, minimize the amount of stuff that you need. If you don't need that extra wah pedal or something like that, don't bring it. You know, if you only use it for like one song, screw it. Um, or if you can um, minimize and get smaller pedals, I know they have those really small ones, uh, get those instead. It's going to save you the headache later. Plus, the fees when you take stuff like that on planes is just ridiculous. And I know that, I know that, the cruise line will compensate you back for some of your uh, luggage, but I don't think they're going to pay you if you want to bring 10 guitars and your half stack and all this <laughs> kind of stuff, right? Absolutely not. And, and that's, and that's, and that's what I mean by, you know, take only the essentials because like, okay, I get it. Maybe you want to bring an acoustic and you want to bring an electric. Cause that's like part of your sound. That's, that's, that's what you were hired for. Okay, fine. But, you know, even if the company is going to reimburse you 100%, a lot of that is the headache of taking it's still a hassle. all of that stuff. Yeah, because, I mean, you still have to bring all your clothes and stuff like that. So when I travel, I have one large suitcase um, full of all my clothes and shoes and so on and so forth. And I have my backpack full of my electronics that never leave my side. And, uh, and then I have my music equipment. So whether it would be my bass or my guitar, um, whatever it may be, um, I, I bring that stuff and that's pretty much it. So I only, I'm only carrying like three, maybe four things. Um, and you really want to limit yourself to that because, you know, after doing, after doing two years of ships, going back and forth between countries, if you're taking more instruments than you need to, you're also risking damaging more instruments than you need to. And losing it. Well. Exactly. And losing it as well. Or being they, stolen. You know, anything can happen. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Anything can happen along the way because once that instrument is out of your sight, you don't know what the heck happens to it. For some reason, uh, after my second contract, when I got my acoustic guitar back, um, <clears throat> my the the truss rod in, my, in the neck of my guitar had popped out and the 
the electronic box on the side of the guitar was smashed in. And my guitar case was half open when it came out of the conveyor belt. And I was really pissed about it. I mean, but there was nothing I could really do. So I fixed it the best I could. And luckily, it still sounds fine. I had to put some gaff tape on the on the little electronics box because now when I play, it rattles. So, yeah. Um, the the try not to bring too many too many instruments. And along those lines, if you don't have to bring your five, six, seven thousand dollar guitar, don't bring it. You know, I bought I I specifically bought a four hundred dollar guitar for ships, so that in the event that what happened happens, you know, I'm like, okay, fine. I bought this specifically for that because I have another classical guitar over here that's way nicer. It doesn't have any pickups, but I could have easily, you know, brought that and mic'd it up. But um, that one, I didn't even want to risk it. So I spent the extra money. A lot of things about ship life is is you, you it's compromise. And, and I feel like when it, you start talking about artists... And they're really going for a sound and, and people who are very experienced to get really picky with like what they're trying to go for. But something I try and stress a lot is that the cruise ships is not what it is on land. It's never going to be what you think it's going to be. And you, you have to kind of be able to adjust on the fly and make the best of what you have, you know. So and, and I agree with you. I don't think a $7,000 guitar, whether or not it sounds good is going to be the best choice. I spoke with a uh, one of the show band um, guitarists when I was on my last ship because I asked him a similar question, like, you know, what kind of guitar you said. And, and he said he had about eight guitars, um, but he said he chose a guitar specifically that would, like, he, he has one guitar back home that's just for jazz, right? And another guitar that's just for rock, you know? But on the ship, you, 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 he said, I wanted to bring one guitar. So he, he found a guitar that was good enough at everything. Because, especially as, as the, the show band guitar player, you're playing all different kinds of music anyway, all different genres. And so, it's like, it's, you know, sometimes you just have to, you kind of have to adjust your own lifestyle to match what is even possible on the ship. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and I think that's a great word that you use, um, compromise, because... Yeah, it's never going to be as convenient as home. I mean, granted, it's really hard to find consistent work like this on land where you're playing every single day for like three, four, five, six months straight, sometimes even more if your contract gets extended. But, you know, because of that, you, you have to deal with the with floating on a ship, you know, and, and, and working with what they have there and dealing with flying 12 to 20 hours or however you know long your flight is dealing with the flights so so yeah and and the other thing is i mean it's cool to see a really awesome instrumentalist you know with their with their acts on stage and you know it's like a seven thousand guitar dollar guitar or something like that but you know if you can if you can get away with something else that sounds just as good why not so that's that's great that that you mentioned that guy who found something that was like middle of the road where it did everything that he needed to do perfect, you know, because at the end of the day it's it's what what we're playing for they're not concerts, you know, a, a lot of the time it's just like oh hey that's cool and someone will come down there and they'll watch and then they'll forget yeah right <laughs> and then they'll go about their day. You know, at least at least from like a quartet standpoint, you know, the party band may be a little bit different, but still, you know, like it's 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 not like you're in a Leonard Skinner tribute band. Right. How uh, how long how long were your contracts? And and going back to what I asked before about the eight, like you can you can kind of negotiate your uh, your money. Can you negotiate your contract link? Are there things like that you can also do? Yeah. Um. So as far as negotiating goes, money money is one of them. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you can't necessarily negotiate your contract length in the sense that you're like, no, I don't want to do that. Um, you, but you can do fill-in contracts because sometimes they have those available. My first contract in a duo was actually a fill-in contract um, because, okay, so weird situation that happened, right? 2000, uh, 2016. 
I was supposed to hop on a contract at the end of August, and then it was supposed to be like a month and a half, end in, end in like October, and then pick up, pick back up at the end of November, and then from there do another six month contract. All of that th stuff got messed up. That first initial fill in got messed up, and they canceled that. And then the second one got bumped up to I think like the beginning of October. And so now we didn't we didn't have anything for like six months. And so I talked to my agent and I, I said, you know, find us something. And so he said, OK. And he found us a month and a half fill in contract because um, something happened with the with the previous duo on the ship. And and yeah, we stepped in for a month and a half. And these things happen fairly often. Um, and, and I'm I'm a clear example of it because my duo partner got pregnant on the ship. And so she had to leave, and so our contract was cut short. So another duo came in and filled in the last month and a half of our contract. So these things happen, I don't know if I want to say all the time, but they happen often enough where if you would tell your agent, like, look, I'm looking for short contracts, please consider me for for those. You know, that, that could be the case because sometimes people may not want the short contracts. Maybe they're really short. Sometimes you'll you'll come across something that's like a week, week and a half. That's like a super fill in. And um, and if 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 you're on the agent's roster, um, they'll send you that email and say, we we need someone who's ready to go tomorrow. You know, we're going to fly you out. And then it's a two week contract for a guitarist who can fill in in a party band or for the orchestra or whatever. And so sometimes those things do happen. And so yeah, I would just I would just suggest if if that's something you, that you wanted to I, I guess you could say negotiate with with your agency, absolutely. Just let them know I only want to be considered for uh, this length of contract. Nothing too permanent. Um, because I did meet a couple people on the ship who who were um, still in school. A buddy of mine that I met on the first contract, he's a trumpet player. And uh, he was only there for like a month. He was like, yeah, I'm on break from school, but I got to go back. And uh, and yeah, every now and then I see him back on contracts. I think he was uh, I think he's about to hop back on one or he was just on one or something like that. Uh, you know, Facebook, I see pictures and stuff like that. But um, yeah, that that I would definitely say it's it's somewhat negotiable in that sense. And I kind of went off on a, on a little rant there, and, and I lost track of what your question was. No, <laughs> At you, least part of it. <laughs> I, I think you, you answered it just fine. Okay. Um, you're currently not on ships right now. Why did you, uh, why did you step out? The reason why I'm not on, on – the reason why I, why I originally stopped was not really by choice. My dual partner got pregnant, and you know she had to leave. I was on the ship by myself for about – almost two weeks before they switched they switched me out with another duo because they couldn't have two solo guitarists on the ship. If it wasn't for that, I'd probably still be on ships right now. Um, but I will say that as you progress through your you know your, your ship life career, um, what happens is you start to realize all the things that you're not so fond of on ships, like drills or you know the 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 corporate military structure that that is a huge turnoff you know and and a lot of these things you don't really have to worry about this on land especially as a musician you know like the last thing that i want to think about as a musician is waking up at freaking eight o'clock in the morning so that I can put on an, a you know a, a bright orange vest, run up the stairs like three or four or five decks or something like that, stand around and pretend like I'm I'm ushering people into you know the theater, and then some dude comes around, marks you off, and he may even ask you how many people fit into lifeboats, and and I'm like on my toes because if I can't answer that question, he's gonna make me go to training. Anyway, I digress. So there's so many other things that that I that I don't like about ships that um, really turn me off. So it's it's like it's like what 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 is what is worth it for me? Now, um, I always think back if I would have started doing ships when I was really young, like 22, 23, fresh you know fresh out of college or something like that, ready to go, man, 
I would have enjoyed the heck out of out of ship life, and um, yeah, I'd probably I'd, I'd probably enjoy it for you know four, five, six years. You know, I don't know, focus on saving some money and then go do something else. Um, one thing that really struck me was that when you're on ships, uh, you really have to be focused on what's ahead, right? If you don't plan on being ships, uh, if you don't plan on being on ships for the next like. 10 years or something like that, then what's next for you? And how are you building toward that right now? So you may be on ships and then you get off ships five years later and then realize, well, yeah, maybe you saved up some money, but you're starting off from scratch on land because you haven't built any connections. You, you haven't done anything for yourself back home, especially as a musician. You know, when I come back to Los Angeles uh, after having done a contract it, nobody cares you know like they didn't they didn't see you you're not building a fan base like the best you can do is have material to show which would be great but again you know and also you can only save up so much money when you're on the ships too so yeah there, there's not a lot of opportunities to make more money um along the same lines of that generally what happens if you is if you try to sell material on the ship as well the ship will take a cut so you know sometimes it's like a 50 50 thing so it's like if i'm selling a cd for 20 bucks i'm, I'm now making only 10 when back on land i would have made like 18 dollars off of it or something like that so there's a lot of things but um but yeah the, the main thing that turned me off from working on ships um, is the fact that I, I don't know what I'm building for myself back on land, how I'm setting myself up for, uh, you know, having a family, you know, owning a house, things like that. So, um, but al along the other side of that, I did happen to, you know, we, we had a conversation the other day, Sean, that, that I, I mentioned that I may hop back on ships. And... The, the reason why I'm also still considering it is because, well, the fun aspect still still um, appeals to me. Uh, even though I'm pushing 31, I still feel like I'm 21. Um, mentally, my body still tells me I'm not 21. But, you know, <laughs> um, every now and then I think to myself, that would be kind of cool. What I know is going to happen is I hop on the ship and then three or four months later after the ship, I'm like, oh, that's why. I remember now why I don't want to be on ships anymore. And that's how you end up um, with those people who you see on the ship and they're like, yeah, this is my last contract. And then you see them again on a contract. And you're like, hey, wasn't your last one your last one? You, and then they say, yeah, no, for, for real, though, this is my last one. And it happens over and over and over again. <laughs> Now, with that said, do you think it's worth it to be a musician and, and do a contract on a cruise ship? Uh, great question, because that depends on what you want to do with your musician career, right? If, if what you're trying to do is build your chops and just practice and get a gig, a professional gig that pays, you're not worried about anything else, maybe you're like fresh out of college or whatever, then yeah, absolutely go to ships. But if you are trying to build a following, establish yourself as a professional musician so that people can see you, you should stay on land. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, like if you, it, it's cool to be able to say like, yeah, I play on cruise ships, you know, I play internationally and, and this, this and this. But the fact of the matter is when you get home, nobody knows you. You know, you'll, you may have material to show them, so on and so forth, but you haven't been grinding on the scene. You know, there's a difference when you go home and then if you're if you're playing like you do on ships on land, man, everybody's going to know you. If you have somewhere to play every single night, there's no way that you wouldn't be able to make it. Now, it's not as easy to play every single night on land, but again, you know, what's 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 more worth it trying to trying to grind it out on land or, you know, taking the relatively easier way and going on ships, it, again, it just depends on what you're looking for. For me, because when I hopped on ships, I, I had no intention of trying to make it as a professional musician um, in the sense that, you know, I'm trying to build a reputation back home. Like, yeah, ships is perfect for me. It was definitely worth it for me because I... 
um, it was it was it was more about the opportunity to to have an adventure, to um, to make some extra money and just to really expand my horizons. There was nothing else in my life that really taught me about the world like being on a cruise ship and experiencing other cultures. And that wasn't just from like visiting the ports. I'm talking about just being on the ship, being exposed to um, all of these different, I, all these different people. I would never met Serbians before. I'd never met Greek people before. Man, and they're fun to drink with. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, I agree with you earlier. You said um, that if you had started on ships when you were a bit younger, maybe 21 or 22, you might still be doing it. I've actually said that before. You know, I, I finished school and I tried to figure out my life for about four years on land. And then I joined ships when I was 25. And age isn't always the 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 main factor in people's lives but when i decided to to finish ships you know i kind of similar to you i said you know i i know what it's like on land i know what it takes to to have a, a life on land and part of me toward the end of my my time on ships i was feeling that you know the longer i'm on ships the less i can do on land but with that said if I think if, if you want to be on ships and you want to perform or do whatever, like y you could, you can definitely have a career on a cruise ship. You can, people do it for 20 years. I mean, 30 years. Like if you want, if you look, cause some people love it. And, and I would say I'm, I'm envious of those people because they've found their passion and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, in my very first video ever recorded, what I was trying to say was for me, I felt that once I got that idea, that cruise ships might be something fun to do. It was like, it, it was planted in my brain. And I, and it, it was, it wasn't going away. And I knew that I just, I needed to try. Because even if I hated it, at least I tried. And, and, and that's what I tell people. I said, especially if you're young, and if you're a musician, I, if, if anyone asked me, hey, I just graduated from school, I studied music, and you have no idea what you're doing, Absolutely. Why not uh, plan a cruise ship? Like you said, you play every day. You play three, four, five sets every day. You're gonna read mu if if you're in the show band, and you're gonna read music every day. And like, um, and I love what you were talking about. You have a guest entertainer comes on the ship. You have one rehearsal with all new music, and then you play two full shows. Like that's that's kind of crazy, but it's it's awesome. It's fun. It's quick. Um, but with, with everything, with cruise ships, you know, it's, it's compromised. It's compromised with your lifestyle on the ship. It's compromised, like you were saying earlier, with the things you give up on land in order to be on the ship. You know what I mean? Um, many musicians I speak with say things like, you know, I did a contract, but I started to feel that the longer I'm away from home, the, the, the less relevant I am back home and, and all the time I've spent back home creating a circle of musicians and gigging, you know, um, and, and networking that I've done, I feel like it's, it's withering away the longer I'm gone. And so, you know, w with everything, there's pros and there's cons and you just have to do it and figure out whether or not the pros outweigh the cons you know, for you, and, and, and that goes with any job, you know, not, not just guitar players, that goes with any position on the cruise ship, because I had a lot of fun until the end, and I started saying, I think it's probably a better decision for me now to not do ships, but never in a million years have I ever regretted being on ships. It was great. I'm so happy that I did it, and I, I'm feeling that you, you definitely feel the same way as well. Absolutely. I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. I mean, you know, of all the negative experience I've ever had on ships, uh, <clears throat> my positive ones, they, they, they far outweigh them. And, you know, it, it's, it's moving on is only a matter of maturity, you know, and that kind of goes back to, you know, what we're, what we're talking about. Just if we would have started younger, you know, like it, it, we we're, we're not bound by necessarily by the same constraints that we are now that we're older 
you know, whether it's bills or whether it's having to grow up and, you know, own these things. Not saying that because we're 30 that we still have to do these things now, but it just becomes uh, just a very real, even more of a real factor. Thank you so much for coming on and talking to me about being a musician. Um, I was really excited to have the opportunity to learn kind of more than just my one job that I that I uh, that I had on the cruise ship. Sean, thanks so much for having me on. Um, it's, it's definitely a, definitely a pleasure, and and you know I hope that that your viewers um, definitely took some value in in things that we were able to discuss today, and uh, I. I would encourage anybody who has an inkling to join cruise ships just to do it. Um, and if you're thinking about being a musician, uh, just go out there and do it. Use this video as inspiration that it's not that difficult to start. And, um, you know, uh, utilize the answers that, that, you've, that you've found here today as, as a starting point. So, thanks again, Sean. Thank you for watching Coffee with Sean. Um, go check out Jordan's channel. He has more than just cruise ship stuff. He has an entire uh, vlog. He talks about everything about life. He's he's really, really good about um, helping people kind of follow what makes them happy. You know, he's, he's very inspiring and he's a great guy to talk to. Um, I love what he does. And he, and he actually, he tries really hard to make good videos too. And as a videographer, uh, I really appreciate uh, the quality uh, and the attention to detail he puts on his vlog. Um, so definitely go check him out. Subscribe to his channel so you can get all the new uh, videos when he posts on his vlog. Um, and if you have any questions about um, cruise ship stuff, you can reach out to me or reach out to him, definitely. Um, or any questions about being a musician, definitely talk to Jordan. He's a great resource um, and just an awesome guy. So thanks again, Jordan. And uh, for you guys, go find an audition and uh, get on a cruise ship.